Well, once again, it's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. So grateful that you're here today. And this is my custom. I often use these words. There was a time before all of these situations occurred that I would often ask, is there anyone here that is here for the very first time? And those that would be here would raise their hand. And I would say to them, just want you to know that you could have been in a number of different places today, but you've chosen to be with us. And I'm a firm believer that today you're not here by mistake. So with that in mind, I'm going to say that this morning, that every person that is here in this room this morning is not here by mistake. God knew that you'd be here this morning, and we're so grateful that you're here. I know that many of you come here because you want to hear and experience something that will impact your life. Amen. How many believe that the Word of God can transform your life? You believe that this morning? See some unfamiliar faces. I recognize your faces. So I want to say thank you for coming today. Glad you're here. I wonder if there's anyone here this morning that is ready for the Word of God. Is there anyone here that is hungry for the Word of God today? Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you will, if you will reach for your Bibles, whatever means it may be. Once again, I want to welcome those who are following us via Facebook or multimedia. Many of our people are not here by virtue of what's going on, and so they follow us via Facebook, which we're so grateful that you're there with us. But how many believe that the Spirit of God can take His Word and thrust it through social media and impact the hearts of those that are listening to His glory, for His glory? Amen. So once again, we're so grateful that you're with us today. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask if you will, if you'll stand to your feet and as we read the Word of God in honor and reverence of the Word of God, began a message last week entitled, Pursue, Overtake, and Recover All. Wasn't able to get through the entire message, and I, I, I did not plan on part two, but here we are today, part two, in a message entitled, Pursue, Overtake, and Recover All. I believe there are many uh, areas of this message that will hopefully and prayerfully make a difference in your life today. I'm going to read to you just, a, once again, a foundational area of Scripture that I read to you last week, uh, just to remind you where we are this morning. 1 Samuel chapter 30, I'm going to read to you, beginning with verse 1. And it reads as follows, and, when, and it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. Reading out 1 Samuel chapter 30. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelite, Lydus, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him because of the soul of all the people who was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Let's pray. Father, we honor you as our God. We thank you, Lord, once again for who you are in our lives. We thank you for your word that speaks to us with clarity. Spirit of the living God, know that you are welcome in this place. We have already felt your presence, but I desperately need you to guide me to speak through these lips of clay, that the word of God may be ministered to those that are here. We honor you as God. Jesus of Nazareth, we give you glory we thank you for who you are. And Father, we pray in his name to your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. You may be seated. 
in the house of the Lord. Last week, once again, I began this message simply entitled Pursue, Overtake, and Recover All. And I came to this place where, where I, I recognize that uh, many of God's people are going through situations and circumstances, many struggling in their uh, walk of life, even today, even in the household of faith. Received many calls uh, explaining to me, expressing to me uh, situations that are occurring in their lives. And, and I've come to the realization that oftentimes, or, or even uh, in the true element of where we are today, many of God's people are yet struggling in their Christian journey. And with that in mind, I come to the remembrance that the Word of God is a book of deliverance, that it's a book of, of transformation, that it is a book of encouragement, that within the Word of God, we find the answers to our situations. And for many of us, we simply don't recognize that enough to know that many of the things that we are going through even today on this side of life, the answer is found in the Word of God to our situations. Now, if, if I was to continue to read, uh, you would read exactly uh, what happened. David inquired of the Lord after all that had transpired. And, and last week, once again, I, 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 I laid the foundation for this message, expressed to you exactly what transpired. But the Bible goes on to say that, that David smote the people, that, that they, they, they found a, a man who took them to uh, the Amalekites and, and they were able to locate everything that was taken from them. And now because David inquired of the Lord, he encouraged himself in the Lord. He pursued after those things that were taken. And the Bible tells us that David recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. And David rescued his two wives. He said, it, the word of God said, and there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoiled nor anything that they had taken to them. The Bible says David recovered all. I, I use that as a premise for our lives, for our situations, for our circumstances. And I ask you to introspectively look at your life where you are, to, to determine how you are existing even today in the promises of God, even in the household of faith. For, for those individuals who, who call themselves followers of Christ or Christians, I want you to examine right where you are even now in your Christian journey. Ask yourself, are you experiencing the, full, the fullness of what God has ordained for your life? And if the answer is no, it's incumbent upon us to identify the reason why. So I'm gonna ask you this morning to once again, make this message personal. Ask yourself where you are, how you find yourself even now to those who may be in our presence and have never surrendered their life to Jesus Christ, I'm gonna ask you to begin to assess your life and your circumstances and determine, are you finding fulfillment in a life that is separated apart from the creator of the universe? I'm gonna ask you today to make a decision that will alter your, your destiny. Now, I didn't focus on this verse that, that I'm gonna to read to you now because the, the next verse says this, and David took all the flocks and the herds which they had drave before th those other cattle and said, this is David's spoil. Last week, I did, not, I did not in any way focus on that verse. But when you understand what it's saying, not only did David recapture and recover all that was taken from him and everyone else, he, he also was able to take what he considered his spoil. In other words, the flocks and the herds of the Amalekites, everything that they had taken as they were beginning to possess that land, David ended up with it. And he said, this is David's spoil. Will I use that to, in my frame of reference in mind, to believe or to take it from this perspective? For those of you today that life has taken something away from you, or if situations have taken away your fulfillment or your joy in Jesus. If the enemy has addressed you personally and has come against you to attack you, to take your joy, to steal your faith, and to kill your destiny. Using this verse as a reference that David ended up with more than he lost. I want you and I to use that as a reference to say whatever life has taken away whatever the enemy has stolen from me, that if we stand on the promises of God, that not only can we reclaim whatever it is that we lost, I'm convinced that we can exceed those things that we have lost 
in Jesus. Is there anyone here that believes that this morning in Jesus' name? Now, I'm going to take you through these verses of Scripture and others to, to hopefully give you something that you can use on this side of life, on this side of heaven, as you assess your life. Because I know that here today, the reality of the matter is that there are those today that if I was to ask them this question, are you finding fulfillment in your relationship with the living God? There might be those who say, yes, that, that without question, that is me. But I'm also inclined to believe that there are those even in this room today, that if I was to ask you, ask you this question, how is your life today in Jesus? That you might not be able to express to me that you are living the fulfilled, abundant life in Christ. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. I'm not going to ask you to identify who you are. But I believe that there might be those who, who would respond to me. I, I really have been living a frustrated life. Situations have not turned out the way that I intended for them to turn. There's been a lot of disappointment in my life. There's been a lot of frustration in my life. And, and, and though we might want to do and experience the right thing, and I might say, or you might say to me, my, my desires are there, my will is there, uh, my, 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 my aspirations are to experience what God has ordained in my life. But sometimes my actions contradict my intentions. Sometimes I find myself doing things that maybe contradict God's purpose in my life. And maybe, maybe you come to the realization that a fact in life will be that, that, that as you walk this Christian journey, that you might have some struggles, that you might have some battles. And I know that we live in a generation where, where we are told that if, if you're a child of God that, and if you're living a life that is submitted to the Lordship of Christ, that, that you should overcome every situation in life. And I'm here to tell you, we have that ability. How many of you believe today that no matter what happens on this side of heaven, you can overcome any situation that comes against you? Do you believe that this morning? And I wonder this morning if I am speaking to a people of faith today. That is who we are. But then there's real life. Because there are times when even in my life, I can walk in abundant faith. I can walk above the, the circumstances in life. But every now and then, situations occur that might capture me by surprise. I wonder if I'm the only one. And oftentimes in those situations, we find ourselves in adversity or trouble. Or, or maybe we can simply reduce it to a trial or a test. But I believe that many of us will find ourselves there. So oftentimes, even in the household of faith, when we want to identify ourselves as overcomers, as, as those being victorious in God, the reality is for many is that we find ourselves in battles in life. We said that over and over and over again. And once again, I, I don't want to give the inclination that I'm speaking those words of death into someone's spirit because that's not, that's not what I am endeavoring to do. But what I am wanting to do is to each one of us help us to identify that if there is a circumstance or a situation in our lives that must be dealt with. And I've said this so many times, even this past week, even after last week's message, I have said this so many times this week to numerous people who have come to me and say, but I'm going through this. You don't understand what's happening in my life. And I say, is it a battle? Yes, it's a battle. I'm fighting for my existence today. And I ask them this question, well, what are you doing to combat that battle in your life? And oftentimes, they, there, there's no answer. There's no response. Because in reality, what most of us tend to do is we get a beat up by the circumstances in life. Situations occur. And instead of finding ourselves uh, relying on what we know in Jesus Christ, we are, we are impacted by the circumstances that occur. So now we focus on those situations. So, so many, even in the household of faith, what I've come to realize, find themselves in battles. And what I do, I desire to do is to give you the word of God in such a manner that when you find yourself in the battles in the home or battles on the job or, or battles in your own mind or battles in your spirit or battles of your flesh or battles of addiction or, or, or battles of whatever it may be in your life, that you receive something from the word of God that will empower you to overcome those battles in your life. That can be found in the word of God. It's one of the reasons why I've so often said that I will never compromise the word of God. Because I know what it did for me. 
at some of the lowest points in my life. How the word of God gave me new life. How the word of God began to change and transform me from who I was. That's in the word of God. And, and what God has done for me, without a shadow of a doubt, he will do for you. So we don't compromise the word of God. I, I don't ask you to come. I don't ask you to watch. I don't ask you to follow us just to entertain you for an hour. I ask you to come if you're serious about your journey in Jesus, that, that we can give you something that when you get into the battlefield of life, then now you will have weapons for your warfare that you can overcome those situations in your life. So we see all over the word of God, as I said last week, that the nation of Israel often found themselves in battle. And oftentimes, most of the op times that that occurred, it was because they found themselves in disobedience to the things of God. That gives me the inclination once again that oftentimes in our lives we find ourselves in difficult situations because although we might know what God says for us to do or has aspired for us to do, we find ourselves being in control of our own destiny, our own lives, our own decisions, where we go, how we respond, how we act, what we say, uh, how, how we deal with circumstances in life and never totally yield into the things of the word of God. So today, once again, I want to speak to those that are listening today. Those that may feel defeated in life. Those that may feel disappointed or frustrated by situations. Those that for whatever reason, life has dealt you a, a situation that you don't know what to do and you don't know how to deal with it and you don't know what's gonna happen in your future. For those of you who are ready to give up on something that has been in your life for a period of time and now because of life as we know it today, it has impacted everything and you don't know where to go. You don't know how to respond. So I'm gonna to speak to you this morning because I'm convinced that not only are the promises of God achievable in our lives, but they're attainable. And I don't know if there's anyone here that can stand on the promises of God with me and say, I believe it for my life as well. So, so understanding with that, with that in mind, today, if you want to experience what the creator of the universe has desired for your life. Why? The very reason why you're born, why you're alive today in this generation. For those of you that want your life to amount to something other than your own desires, but that maybe you can make a difference in the kingdom of God, even today, I'm going to speak to you. I'm going to encourage you in your situation. Some of you that might have opposition, some of you that might have contradictory forces that are coming against you, whatever the negative influences may be in your life, whether you're contending with, with life in general or the, the, the world, the flesh or, or the enemy, whatever it is that you're going through today, I, I want you to be convinced that you can overcome and you can win that situation in your life. I said to you, the title of this message is Pursue, Overtake, and Recover All, Part 2. The subtitle is Fighting Your Battle to Win. So I'm going to ask you this morning, if there's anyone here today that is going through a situation that you know in your life, it has been identified as a battle for you. You don't have to raise your hand because I don't need to identify it. I want you to identify it for yourself whatever it may be, whether it's physical, whether it's emotional, whether it's mental, whether it's a struggle to an addiction or a bondage in your life. Others may not know of what you're going through, but you know what it is. Maybe it's your response to other people. Maybe, maybe you, you have a, a short temper or, or, or maybe uh, the, the anger that comes forward that's uncontrollable and you, you simply can't control it. Whatever it may be, I want you to identify what it may be for you. And there might be some here today that, 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 that say, no, you, you, they'd say, no, no, I, I can't do that. There might be someone here to say, well, well, even though I have identified what you're referring to for me, I can't overcome it because I've tried. I have called on the name of the Lord to help me to overcome this situation. And for whatever reason, it just does not go away. I'm speaking to you this morning. 
Because I'm convinced for those of us who have the spirit of the living God living within us, that he gives us the power and the authority to overcome any situation in life. I wonder if I have a witness this morning. With that in mind, I want you to begin to focus on that situation in your life. Once again, there are many that come to me and say, I'm struggling over here and I'm struggling. Had a conversation, uh, once again, numerous times, numerous people. And it always comes down to this for many people. I'm struggling. I'm fighting. I'm battling. And I, and I will ask this question. I, is there something in your life that you just can't let go of? Something that has become somewhat of a bondage to you. And for many people, they've not yet identified that thinking, well, well, that situation does not really apply to me because I can control it whenever I want to. It does not have a control of me. I have control of it. Not realizing that for many people, it is that very situation that keeps them yet in bondage. So I'm going to ask you this morning to be transparent. Not necessarily with me, but I'm going to ask you to be transparent with yourself today. So this morning, I wanted to try to show you how all of this begins. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, listen to this, to, the, to this verse. For all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. One verse that has at the very least four elements that we have to understand. Notice, for all the promises of God in him are yes and amen. Let me, let me break this down for you. For all the promises. How many believe this morning that God has promises in his word? Is there anyone here that says, I believe that God has promises in his word? Now, I, make, I want you to make it personal. Because I, I want you to make this about you. I want your life to be transformed. I believe the spirit of the living God wants our lives to change. How many of you believe? Oh, yes, yes. All the promises of God. Yes, I believe the promises of God. How many believe that God has promises for you? You. And I know there are those who say, well, well, it never really happens for me. I see it happening for everyone else, but it never really happens for me. You must understand and believe that God has promises for you. And notice what it says. The promises of God in him are yes. And in him, amen. In other words, there are times in our lives where, where, where we desire and we aspire and we want but the, God, the promises of God that the word declares are promises that are made in his word and abide in him. Notice what it says. That it says the promises of the word of God that abide in him, and, and I'm, I'm using a, a little bit of liberty, are yes and in him, amen. In other words, we can rely on the promises of God. We can stand on the promises of God. We can believe on the promises of God. And here you see, once again, notice what he says. But, but, but it's not just a matter of him fulfilling his promises to us so that we can have the fulfillment that we desire. Because notice what it says. Let me read it again. For all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen. Believe. I believe. Notice, to the glory of God, God fulfills his promises in our lives to his glory or for his glory but he fulfills them. Notice how he receives glory through us. Did you see that? Our lives can bring glory to the God that we serve. I wonder how many of us today desire for our lives to honor the God that we serve and to bring him glory through us. That is what the word declares. So, so I'm going to pose this question once again to those, once again, who, who have felt defeat who have felt frustration, who, who maybe ha, are, are going through experiences of disappointment and, and maybe there's anxiety and I often couple that with, with the anxiety that will lead to depression. I'm speaking to you this morning, once again, because I believe the word of God can make a difference in your life. And I want you to look at your situations. And if you're losing your hope today, if your faith is wavering, if your trust in the living God has been impacted or affected this morning, 
As I said last week to those that were here, someone today can leave being delivered by situations and circumstances in your life. Let me say that once again to a crowd that believes what I'm going to say. Someone in this place can leave today being delivered and set free in liberty from the bondages in which you are experiencing even right now. Let me say that one more time because I'm wondering if I'm speaking to the frozen chosen today. I believe that we serve a God who can help you and be, you can be delivered from any situation that may keep you in bondage even today. Can I get a witness today? That is the God that we serve. Today, someone once again will be set free. Now, now as we continue to go forward, I, I want to remind you that, that one of the elements of last week's message was David had to make a decision of what he would do how he would respond to the situations that had occurred after he had wept be, be, be beyond the point of being able to weep after he was being threatened by those who were there to serve him and here now in that situation they speak of stoning him how would David respond and the very first thing that the Bible says is that David inquired at the Lord. Notice, notice, after it says, but David, remember, David encouraged himself. I wonder how many of us this morning can encourage ourselves when situations in life occur in a way that catches us by surprise. How, how many of us, in spite of the circ circumstances, can be encouraged by what we already know that God can do? Why? Because he's been in our lives and, and he's ministered to us and, and he's blessed us and he's provided for us and, and he's been there to lead us and guide us. And, and then situations occur that, that catch us by surprise and all of a sudden we forget about what he has done. And here was David encouraging himself, himself in the Lord. I said to you, I said to you that David had to come to this place where not only did he respond to what God had told him to do, but then he made a decision to pursue after what was taken. That he would overtake it and he would cover it. In other words, there are times in life where we cannot just be in despondency and despair because of life. I've said to you numerous times, the example is all over the word of God. When there are those who find themselves in despondency, in despair, Elijah, God asked Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? When, when Elijah had fled and he was now there in a cave and, and the, the Lord came, what are you doing here? And I believe that there are times in our lives as believers, as followers of Christ, as born again Christians, that we find ourselves in despondency and despair, that the spirit of the living God may say to us, what are you doing here? Because we know what he can do. How do we know what he can do? Because we know what he has done. There was, there was Joshua when he was defeated at the battle of, of, of Ai. Initially, what happened? He was on his face wondering, why did this happen? And the Lord says to, uh, to, to Joshua, Joshua, get up. You see, there are times when we can come before the throne of God and pray and seek the face of God. But I believe that there are also times in our lives where the spirit of the living God will say to us, it's time for you and I to get up and to do something about our situation. The examples all over the word of God. So for the next few minutes, what I want to do is I want to focus on, on what the Bible says here uh, when, when, when it says that, that David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Because I'm going to ask you to do that very same thing. Not only today, but in the days to come. I, I want you to be able to, to understand, to find areas of the Word of God and to begin to apply them to your life. As I was preparing this, I, I came across this uh, in the book of Romans chapter 10. It says, but what does it say? Romans 10 verse 8. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
I wonder how many of you, if I was to ask you this question right now, is there anyone here and, and that, that without a shadow of, of, of any doubt, you can say, I know that I know that I know that I am saved and I am on my way to heaven. I wonder how many of us would raise our hands. I know that I know that I know that I'm on my way to heaven. Notice what this verse says. That if you, could, if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. What I'm convinced that many people not, don't necessarily apply this verse in its true context. Because there are those who believe. There are those who acknowledge. There are no, those who say, yes, I believe that Jesus was real. But, but this verse, you must understand, notice what it says. What, notice what it goes on to say. For you have believed, notice, for God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That tells you what kind of belief this is talking about. Not just the fact, yes, I believe in Jesus. Yes, I go to church. Yes, I went to church today. No, 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 no. no notice what it says. That, that notice what it says. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. In other words, does our belief in the Lord Jesus Christ has it led us to this place that we want to live a life in righteousness. That's a difference. We can't just claim that we're followers of Christ and, and, and don't follow Christ. You see, true salvation includes believing to the point where we recognize that our lives are outside of the will of God and now I'm going to believe the word of God so desperately that it's going to change my life that I'm going to live my life for his glory. Notice what it says. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Confession. Confession. This, this word, what it really means in its context, means to assent to a place of acknowledgement, yes, beyond acknowledgement, to a place of covenant. Do we enter into this place of, of entering into this relationship with living, the living God that we believe in Jesus so much so that our lives change and that now we're living a righteous life? And that we now enter in, co in covenant, a covenant of confession where we give thanks and, 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 and we abide in the promises that God has made to us. See, that's a, there's, there's a difference there. I said to someone the other day that, that, that listen, listen, you know, I, I, with all due respect, I want you to understand that, that, that you, you profess your faith in Christ. But wanna, I want to ask you this question. Has your faith in Christ caused you to be someone different than who you were? I said it with all due respect and love. And, and this person acknowledged it, and that my life has not truly changed to that degree. And I implored him to go deeper. Go deeper. So this morning, once again, for the next few minutes, this is what I want to do. I said to you last week that I have 12 ways that I want to, that I want to give you that you and I, if we so desire, can apply to our lives that we can encourage ourselves in Jesus. We encourage ourselves in the Lord. We encourage ourselves in the Word of God. And I want you to understand that, that, that if we simply apply these areas, and, and once again, I have so many more, but for the sake of uh, the brevity of time and, and this message, I have reduced it to 12. 12 that I will give you that I will not be able to expound, expound on too, too, too much because of time. 12 ways to encourage yourself today. 12 ways to fight your battles to win. How many of you acknowledge today, once again, that, that you need something from the Word of God that will help you on this side of heaven to win the battles in life? Let me give you some right now. One of the first things that we have to do and understand is that we have to first and foremost, and this is not one, this is not the first one, this is the prelude to the very first one. But this is what I would encourage you to do. Right now where we are, right now where you are, you and I must begin to allow the spirit of the living God to search our mind. Allow the spirit of the living God to search who we are. Why? Because it is the ministry of the living God to bring these things to the forefront of our mind as they are identified. 
In, listen, listen to this verse. Psalm 139, 23. For, first, ask God to search your mind and reveal to you any wrong attitudes, motives, and, and, and thinking that, that the enemy may attack you. Search me, O God, and know my heart. And know my thoughts. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Have we done that? Have we been there? Most of us want the promises of God. But, but we want to keep a, a, a semblance of, 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 of something between us where we don't totally yield everything to Him. Yet the Word of God says to us that we to ask the living God to search our hearts. If there's something in me that is apart from you, help me to see this. Asking the, the Holy Spirit to reveal things to you that you have not yet seen. But not only is allowing the Spirit to reveal that to you, but then acting upon what has been revealed. See, so oftentimes, oh, the Spirit, do you understand that the ministry of the Spirit of the living God is to help identify those areas in our life that need to be removed in our lives? Or areas that maybe we're falling a little short. And I believe that there are times where we're able to identify those, but then what do we do from there? How do we respond? How do we act upon the revelation of what is revealed to us that we must get, our, get rid of certain things in our lives? How do we respond? And I'm, once again, I'm speaking to those this morning that truly want to win the battles in life. Because there are those that come to me and say, I, my life is a mess, my situations, you would not believe what I'm going through, and yet not wanting and willing to do what they need to do to change their situations. So many times we would, oh Lord, don't do this in my life. Oh Lord, change me. Oh Lord, break. oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. And there are times where the, living, the spirit of the living God is waiting to see how we will respond to his leadership in our lives. Well, let me give you a few. For those of you, once again, that are ready to fight. Over and over and over again. I say, you, you, want, you want victory in your life? You're going to have to fight. Remember, remember the, 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 what the verse that I gave to you, uh, the, the Bible says, says uh, and then from the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You have to want it. Because if you don't want it, it's not going to change. You can say, oh Lord, I need this to change. I want this to be different. Oh Lord, change it in my life. But if you're not ready to fight, it will not change. Someone in this place has to say, I want my life to be what God has ordained for me. And I'm willing to do whatever I need to do. If I have to fight, I'm ready to fight. So here's what you do. For those of you that look at your life, and I ask you to look introspectively. Don't, don't think about anyone else right now. Don't think about that person that is, that is coming against you and you, 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 you despise and, and that, oh, that person needs to hear this. No, no, no. I'm talking about you and me today. I'm asking you to look at yourself right now. So here's what you do. Number one, for those of you that are ready to fight, those of you that are ready to win the battles in your life, whether it's the battle of frustration, disappointment, anger, anxiety, depression, whatever it may be, if you are ready to fight, let, 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 let me digress. Are you ready? Is anyone here ready to fight for your soul, for your life, for your destiny even now? Here's what you do. No, no particular order, just 12 that came to my mind as I'm preparing this message for you. Number one, you must put on the armor of God, the whole armor of God. Listen, that's a series in and of itself. I don't have time to, 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 to explain it all to you this morning. Ephesians chapter 6 will tell us uh, what we need to do. But, but what I want to just briefly do is focus on a couple of the uh, pieces of armor that we need. Remember, remember, I've said this to you so many times that the enemy, the, the spirit of the living God is after your heart, but the enemy is after your mind. The enemy is after your dis disappointment. He's after your frustration. 
He's after your emotional ups and downs. He's after whatever he can allow to occur in your mind, in your thought processes. Why? Because if he gets your mind, if he gets your thoughts, if he gets all those control, then he can control you. So he's after your mind. So here's what you need to do. One of the things that you have to put on is the helmet of salvation. What does that mean? A helmet is put worn on the head and implies protection to your head, to your mind. See, Paul, as he's writing this, he's not only speaking about your present situation or where you're at right now, but he can also speak to where you're headed and where you're going. Why? Because you're protecting your mind. He's speaking to continuous, consistent salvation for your life. He says, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, Romans 13, 11. So you have to put on the armor of God. You have to put it on, why? Why? The, the helmet of salvation, why? Because it is, it is protection for the mental capacities of your life. When that situation occurs that, that you don't know what to do, you start feeling anxiety and you, maybe worry uh, and, and leads to fear and you don't know how to respond. You have to understand that when you put on the, this, this helmet that protects who you are, it is able to protect your mind, your thoughts. So many more that I have for you. And once again, if you want this, if you want these, I will give them to you. I will give it to you in an outline. You can take them with you because I'm not going to be able to once again to get, get into them too deeply today. Here's number two. Number two, you're ready to fight. Here's number two. Here's what you're going to have to do. Somebody in this place, you're going to have to begin to use the word of God. Over and over and over again, I ask those individuals who are struggling in whatever situation that they're going through, have you found an area of scripture that will fight against what you're experiencing? And unfortunately, more often than not, we have not yet done this. So if you want to, once again, begin to, uh, to, to, to encourage yourself in the Lord, if you want to fight your battles, you and I need to begin to use the word of God. Now, here's what I will say. Many of us use the word of God in this manner. A situation occurs, something happens, and, 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 and all of a sudden, okay, I, I know, okay, I, I know, I know it's in here somewhere. Let me see. Where is that? Where is that? It's in here. We start, and we start looking for it. You know what happens when we're not able to identify the word of God? Oftentimes in that situation, we lose that battle. So what do we have to do? Not only do we use the word of God, but there comes a time where we have to get it into our, our yes. We put it, we're, we're, the battlefield is the mind, right? So initially we get into our head, right? We get into our mind. We, we receive it, we read it, and then we begin to believe it. The promises of God are for me. Come on, come on, somebody. Every now and then we think, oh, the promises of God are for everyone else but me. I'm here to tell you today that you have to believe according to the word of God that the promises of God are for you. And you begin to believe it so much so that it begins to live in your heart. And then when those situations arise and those battles arise now, because now it's in your heart and you're able to, to use it because it's stored in your thought processes. Now, when that situation occurs, you can use that weapon for your warfare. But if it's not there, you won't be able to use it. So what do you do? Let me give you two that can, that can, that can, that can begin to, you on this. If you're not there yet, if you're not there yet, let me give you two that will help you in this manner. Here's one. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. How many would say that that is a good verse for my battle? For many of us, uh, the enemy comes against us or others, others remind us of who we used to be. How many can say that the enemy or, or other people can use my past against me? And I'm not talking about mine. I'm talking about ours. But now, when we understand that now I'm in Christ, now I'm in Christ, and now I'm a new creation, I'm a new creature. And though you may remember my past, and though you may, might remember my shortcomings, and though you remember what I used to be like, I'm here to tell you that old things have passed away, and behold, all things in my life have become new. That's how you begin to win your battles. 
Maybe you say, oh, I don't know. I don't know what my life can amount to because I, I, I have nothing to offer. I, I don't know how I can ever achieve or attain what, what you're trying to tell me. You're trying to tell me that God has something for me. I don't see it. I don't feel it. Everywhere I turn, I feel I have problems. I'm here to tell you, give, let me give you this one. And I want you to make it personal. Because it was given to the nation of Israel through the prophet Jeremiah. One of the prophets that we all so often hear about, Jeremiah 29, 11. Listen to what he, God spoke to his people through the, through the prophet to his people. For I know the plans I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And I'm going to say to somebody today, make that personal today. Maybe I don't see it. Maybe you don't see your future. Maybe you don't know what's going to happen. Maybe you look at all the situations now and you think that they're never going to change. But if we begin to understand that God says to me that he has a plan for me and he knows what he thinks towards me and that he wants to give me peace and not, not of evil and he wants to give me a future and a hope. And I'm saying to somebody today, make that about you. Make it personal. Because you're in a battle we're in a battle. We're in a battle for the, your mind. The enemy is out to destroy your mind. We're in a battle. Those of you who do not know what to do, I'm here to tell you one of the reasons why is because you are in a battle for your thoughts and your mind. So what will you do? Will you just take it all? Or will you start preparing yourself so now you can begin to fight back? All over the word of God are his promises through his word. Number three, I've said to you over and over and over, the battle is for your mind. Number three, here's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up your loins. Wherefore, 1 Peter 1, 13, wherefore gird up the loins of your mind. Well, what, what does that even mean? You, you must understand that in the natural the loins are the central portion of your body below the waist. And, and they're, they're the strongest parts of your body. It's, it's in essence from this area. And Peter, in this context of scripture, he's saying that you should prepare your mind to be strong. But notice, it's something that you have to do. It won't be done for you. It's something that you have to do. Proverbs 4.23 says that, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it will spring the issues of life. Guard your heart. Guard your thoughts. Guard your, 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 your innermost being. Guard yourself. Why? Because every now and then, the enemy is going to come and try to, 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 to squirm his way into your life. And if you're not prepared for so many people, that is exactly when it will happen. Over and over and over again, the word of God tells us and reminds us that we are in a battle. Right now, there are those who don't, will not admit it. But every person in this place today will have to contend with the issues of their thoughts. Every person. But let me give you this verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Prayerfully, prayerfully, it's going, to, it's going to help you just a little bit. Notice what it says. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh... We do not war after the flesh. Here it is. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your disobedience is fulfilled. Powerful word of God. Powerful scripture. The weapons of our warfare, it says, it says they're not carnal. They're, they're, they're not physical. They're not made by human hands. And, and now God gives us weapons that we can use in this battle. But notice what he says. One of the things that he says, casting down imaginations. Imaginations, your thoughts, what you think. What do you think might happen in this situation? Why this circumstance is so bad that it's never going to change. It's only going to get worse. And it's an imagination. You start thinking, it's only going to get worse. Now he says here, cast down that imagination. To, to cast down means, listen what he says. Listen, to cast down is not like this. Oh, oh, this is really happening in my life. Oh, I, I really don't like it in my life. So I'm going to cast this down. 
not what it means. You want me to show you what this means? This word cast down means to hurl it with great force. Paul said, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our carnal warfare are not carnal. In other words, if, if, I, if I could take just another one of these pieces of paper, and I'm going to show you, you, if I cast it down now because of my life, listen, this is my life, this is my frustration, this is everything that I'm going through, all my thoughts tell me, look at my life, it's all messed up, it's never going to get any better, and yet the Word of God says, no, you're wrong, because I know who you are, and I have a plan for your life, and I want to give you a future and a hope, and I look at this situation, and I said, no, but my imagination tells me things, these will never change. And yet the word of God says, cast your imaginations down, casting down your imagination. That means that I don't just set it down. That means I, I take it and I hurl it with force. Put some passion behind that. Put some strength behind that. You let the spirit of the living God lead you and say, listen, as long as we casually deal with our battles, we're going to casually lose our battles. But there comes a time when you have to say to yourself, listen, frustration, I'm going to cast you down. Anger, I'm going to cast you down. First, what, anxiety, I'm going to get rid of you. I'm not going to let it lead into a place of this pretty pressure. I'm going to cast this imagination down and I'm going to stand on the promises of God. We have, to, we have to get to this place. We have to get to this place where we're willing to fight. Notice what it goes on to say. That was number four. Number five, take wrong thoughts captive. Oh, the enemy's always going to beat me up. Oh, Satan's always going to speak to me and try to destroy my life. We know where those thoughts come from. You know when thoughts come into your mind that are not of God. What we have to do, the moment those things happen, do you understand what taking something captive means? Oh, you know what it means. We see it all the time. We've seen it on television. Someone is doing something wrong, and all of a sudden, you hear that, bad boy, bad boy, what you going to do when they come for you? Well, they, they, they take them captive, and they arrest. What does that mean? That we have to arrest the thoughts in our mind and take them captive and say, I'm not going to let that happen to me. But you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to take that thought captive. Because nowhere does it say that God is going to take it captive for you. You have to grab a hold of that situation. And say, it's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to let that control my mind. It, it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. We have to cast down imagination. Every high thing that exalts itself and gets the knowledge of God. When God says, listen, I have this for you. We know what God has promised for us and to us. The enemy and life tells us, no, you're never going to experience it. And that's at that moment in time where we have to take it captive. You're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. I, I don't know if there's anyone here. I don't know if anyone's here want to experience what God has ordained for your life. But notice what it says, bring it into captivity. Every thought, notice, it's not just, uh, just to bring it into captivity. Notice what it says, to the obedience of Christ. Why, why, why? Because we want to obey the living God. Notice, notice, notice. And having in readiness to revenge all disobedience, how does this happen in our lives? When, when, is it, when, is it, when, when is it that the Spirit of the living God will revenge all disobedience or, or whatever that case may be? When, 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 when our obedience is fulfilled. In other words, if we don't obey, if we don't do that, if we don't take every thought captive, if we don't cast away all those things that are, are contra down the imagination, if we don't do that in obedience, then we'll never experience what God has for us. Because that happens when our obedience is fulfilled. That's when it happens. We live in a world today that the promises, easy believism, oh, you pray a simple prayer, now you're on your way, way to heaven. Oh, but the word of God says you need to remain in this race, that you can't turn away from the things of God. And, and so now we have to understand that that's what we need to do. Here's another one, number six. Number six, I'm going to go fast. Paul says this in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, 
whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good, a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. See that? Instead, we think about the problems. We think about the issues. We think about all the adversity, all the troubles. And yet Paul tells us that we're going to turn it around and begin to think on the promises of God, what God has for us, how God, at some point in your life, you could have believed that the enemy was going to destroy your life, but you believed on the promises of God. Notice, notice what we do. You think on these things. When the word of God tells you that you are an overcomer, you need to begin to believe that you are an overcomer. All these different areas, this is what you're going to have to do. But how does this happen? Number seven, number seven, here it is. Number seven, Ephesians 4, 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Romans 12, two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Did you hear that? So many of us are identified by all these situations in our lives, who we used to be. Oh, oh, oh that's never going to work. I, there, though, there might be someone in this place, they say, I, I'm never going to get involved in, this rela- in a relationship again because every time that, that I, I have, it has turned out, for, it, it's, it's, just, it's just always all messed up. And so because of what's already happened, it's never going to happen for me. And, and yet the word of God says that at some point in our lives, we have to transform, be transformed by the renewing of our mind. What does that mean? That word renewing means renovation. Some of us know what it means to be renovated. We go in somewhere, we take out the old, and we bring in the new. Some of you have lost your hope because of your life, because of your disappointment, because of your circumstances. Some of you will never move forward in God because of what has already happened, and you're convinced it'll never be the way that you want it to be or the way that God wants it for you. It's time to renew your mind. It's time to say, maybe it didn't happen then, but that doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. Maybe I didn't experience God's best that time. Maybe I don't see the promises of God being activated in my life, but that doesn't mean that they never will. We need to begin to reform our mind, to renovate our mind, to fall in line with the things of God. Number eight, number eight, number eight. I I said I was gonna go fast. Number eight, encourage yourself in the Lord. The Bible says that, that David encouraged himself. You've had disappointment. But I know that you can remember something that that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God the Father have done in your life. Come on, can can anyone right now identify a time in your life where you knew that you knew that you knew that it was God in your life? Now, now, you need to encourage yourself. Oh, I, I, I spoke to Pastor Corey via text this, 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 this week, and I said, I was in a battle. He wrote his poem, that poem, beautiful poem last week. I said to him, I was in a battle this week. Why? Because everywhere I turned, the enemy was trying to attack my mind, that I'm not good enough, that I'm not qualified, that I don't have this in my life, that I can never be what you as the people of God need. Over and over and over, I was being, I was being beat down by the thoughts that came against me this week. That we're never going to get beyond where we are right now. But then I had to begin to encourage myself in the Lord. I said, Lord, I know that you never called me to fail. I know that you didn't call me to just leave me alone. Begin to, to, to remind myself of what he's already done in my life. And all of a sudden you realize you, you come out of those situations. Why? Because you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what David said. So, so here's what I'm going to say to you, to somebody. Listen, listen to me, someone today. Listen to me. When others don't encourage you, encourage yourself. Listen, when others won't encourage you, encourage yourself. Listen, when everything seems impossible, encourage yourself in the Lord. When everything seems improbable, encourage yourself in the Lord. When it seems that you have no future and no hope, encourage yourself in the Lord. Oh, number nine. Maybe you're confused. Maybe you don't know what's going to happen in your life. Number nine. You need to recognize the source of that confusion in your life. Remember, God is not the author of confusion. We know where that comes from. And because God is not the author of confusion, there comes a time, listen, where we have to get to this place where we uh, refuse to accept the spirit that leads us away from the things of God. Come on, somebody. 
No, notice, notice, listen, listen, listen. Who is, out, who is out to disappoint you in your mindset? Come on now. The enemy is out to destroy you. So you have to re- recognize where the source comes from. Oh, for those people that want to give up and walk away from the things of God. And you need to recognize who it is that is, that is trying to discourage you. Remember who is out to alter God's plan in your life. You know you can identify when something is of God and when it's not. And when it is not of God, you need to recognize where it comes from. And at that point in time, you need to rid yourself of those confusing thoughts. God is not the author of confusion. Oh, over and over and over again, there's ways that we can recognize what God is telling us to do for those of us that want to fight the battles in life to win. Number 10, and I'm almost done. This is what I'm going to say to someone today. You want to win that battle in your life? then you're gonna have to be a watchman on your wall. Understand in the Old Testament, they're in the cities, they would have watchmen that would walk along the wall. And when they saw impending danger coming, they would warn the people. They were watching. They would determine what got into the city and what was not allowed. I'm saying to someone today, you're gonna have to become a watchman on your wall. When you see impending danger coming your way, you need to determine Am I going to let that in or I'm going to let that out? Am I going to, am I going to let that in or I'm going to keep it out? You have to be the watchman on your wall. So for many people, listen, there are many people today, I'm going to say this today, and I don't mean this in, in any way to uh, make accusation by any means, but there are many people today that are yet con- con- convinced in their mind that they can continue in illicit drugs and yet yet be a victorious follower of Christ. I'm here to tell somebody, you need to become a watchman on your wall and determine what you allow into your mind. Why? Because it is there that the enemy is trying to grab a hold of you. And if you're ingesting or taking anything, anything that will alter your natural state of being, know that you've opened the gates to your mind. Only you can control what comes in and what comes out. There might be those that can that continue to tell you, you're never going to be this. You're never going to do this. You're never going to achieve. You're never going to acclaim. Listen, there comes a time if someone is speaking those negative thoughts into your life, it's time for you to close the gate and say, no, not going to let you in. I don't know if that's for anyone here today, but I'm here to tell somebody, you and I are in control of what gets into our thought processes. So you must become a watchman on the wall. Number 11, number 11. I don't know if this is helping anyone, but it's definitely helping me. Number 11, how do, you, how do you remain here? How do you remain here? You want to be victorious? I'm trying to help you. When you leave this, this place today, you're going to walk in victory. You're going to walk in a place where you can, you, can have, uh, you can defeat those battles in your life. Here's what you need to do. Number 11, listen, what it says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Number 11, what do you have to do? Keep your mind stayed on Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? In other words, life can come at you. Life can attack you. Life can try to destroy you. The enemy can come against you to try to tempt you, to try to get you to go back to your old way of life. I'm here to tell you, the word of God says that he will keep him or her in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So when those situations come, that temptation comes, that, that, that thing to get you out of the will of God. No, no, no. I'm thinking about Jesus. No, I'm thinking about God's promises to me. No, I'm thinking about God's plan for my life. No, I'm thinking about what God has in store for me. Listen, maybe, maybe we're, so, we're so inclined to think of what's going on all around us, and we see all these circumstances and all these situations. We don't know if it's ever going to change. Well, here's what you need to do. Keep your mind stayed on him and say, but one of these days, Jesus is coming back for me, and one of these days, he's taking me back to heaven, and one of these days, I'm going to be in the presence of God, and you keep your mind stayed stayed on him. That's how you fight your battles to win. Last one. Let's ask the worship team to come back. Last one, number 12, number 12. Giving you 11 already ways to fight the battles in your life to win. Number 12, you must remember your identity in Christ. See, one of the reasons why many of us lose these battles is because we don't recognize who we are in Christ. Number 12, remember who you are in Christ. When the enemy tells you to, tries to tell you that you're a loser, 
when life tries to tell you that you're never gonna amount to anything, when situations in life tell you that you're always gonna be an alcoholic or you're always gonna contend with drugs or you're never gonna be able to overcome those things, I'm here to remind that person who the spirit of the living God lives within that you can overcome that situation by remembering that the spirit of the living God lives within you and who you are in Christ. In other words, when the enemy tells you that you're this or you're that, no, you can begin to say, no, I am justified. I am free from condemnation. I am a child of God. I am an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus. I am assured that all things will work together for my good. I am free from any condemning charges against me. I am more than a conqueror. I cannot be separated from the love of God. I am washed and I am sanctified. I am united with the Lord and I am one spirit with him. I have been bought with a price. I am a member of Christ's body. I have been established, anointed, and sealed by God. I am a new creation. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am redeemed from the curse of the law. I am an heir to the blessings of Abraham. I am a saint, a holy one. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing. I am accepted in the beloved. I have been adopted as God's child. I have redemption through his blood. I am saved by grace through faith. I am his workmanship. I have direct access to the God through his Holy Spirit. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his not mine. I will not worry about anything. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm getting all that I need and my needs are being met by Jesus. I am delivered from the power of darkness. I'm complete in Christ. I am not, have not been given the spirit of fear. I am one who submits to God. I am overcome. I will overcome the devil. I have been born of God. I have eternal life. I am a child of God. I have been redeemed. I have been saved. I have been changed. I have been cleansed to the glory of the living God. Why? Because I know who I am in Christ. I know who I am in Christ. I know who I am in Christ. That is how you win. That is how you fight your battles to win. But you have to do it. Cast your imaginations down. You have to do it. Get rid of this situation in your life. You have to do it. If you're going, if you're going to win the battles in life, then you're going to have to fight. And I don't know if there's anyone here today that can say, I am determined right now that on this side of heaven, I am going to fight my battles in life to win. Come on, somebody. Is there anyone? I am determined that I am going to fight, and it starts right now. You're going to, listen, someone today is going to overcome un unnecessary worry and fear. Why? Because you're going to start believing on the promises of God for your life. You're going to have to do it. Now, here at Livingstone Family, we haven't said this in a while, but I'm going to remind you that we have a declaration of faith here. Let me read it to you. Livingstone Family Worship Center, declaration of faith. I don't know if there's anyone else here that's going to believe this with me. Brother, will you believe this with me? Anyone else that will believe this with me? Here it is. Here it is. Livingstone Family Worship Center, declaration of faith. I am a child of God. Come on up. If you, if you believe that, I want you to say this with me. I am a child of God. I am blessed of the Lord. I am highly favored in God. Come on now. I am highly, listen, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that I'm highly favored in God. I know. And I don't say that to boast. I am a child of God. And now listen, listen, listen. I am highly favored. Now, how about this? Declaration of faith. I am anointed to win. I, I am, you are anointed to win. Come on, somebody. Listen, can anyone else claim that with me? Brother, look, you are anointed to win. Michelle, we are anointed to win. We are anointed to win, aren't we? Now, let me just say this as I say, we are anointed to win. Listen, one of the smallest worship teams in the state of Kansas and all over the country, but one of the most anointed worship teams that you're going to find. Why? Because we're anointed. Brother, listen, listen, listen. Hey, br brother, look at me right here. We are anointed to win. Do you believe it? Come on. Come on. Am I preaching? Am I, am I speaking to the right crowd today? Am I speaking to the right crowd? We are anointed to win. The Spirit of the living God. Listen, here. I am empowered to prosper. I am empowered to succeed. God has called us to prosper. God has called us to succeed. 
God didn't call us to be defeated. God didn't call us to lose the battles of life. God did not call us to fail. We have been called and empowered to prosper, to succeed. And here's the last one. Livingstone Family Worship Center, Declaration of Faith. I refuse to be cursed. What does that mean? I refuse to let something come and grab a hold of me that's going to take me away from the promises of God. I refuse to let something hold me in bondage. I refuse to be cursed. I will let, not, not, not let that situation grab a hold of me. Come on now. Can anyone else claim this with me today? In Jesus' name, to the glory of God, we are a people of God. We need to begin to fight our battles to win. Listen, people of God, I know, I know, listen, right now, right now, right now, right now, the spirit of anger right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, the spirit of anger is trying to attach itself to someone in this place today. And I, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, as a called servant of God, by the authority and unction of the living God, rebuke that spirit even now. We are called to be victorious on this side of heaven. But here's what we have to do. We have to fight. Are you ready to fight? Come on, brother. Oh, I'm so glad you're in my life. You're a blessing to me. I'm so glad you're here. Are you ready to fight? Come on now, somebody. Let me see once again. Am I speaking to the right crowd? Come on now. If you're ready to fight, I'm going to ask you if you will to stand to your feet. And we're going to go before the throne of God. Praise God. Praise God. Everybody turn around. Look at this young lady. Praise God. She came in here in bondage. She came in here. Uh, 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 the enemy was trying to destroy her over the past week. And now she's raising her hands to the glory of the living God. That is what we're talking about. That is what we're talking about. It's the power of the spirit of God, the word of God. He will do that, but we have to fight. Come on now, can we enter this song? Let, the, let Corey come and lead us and, and listen. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. One of the weapons that we have is our ability to worship the God that we serve.
So we pray. 